What's Christmas like in Spain? In this video, I'm gonna break that down for you so you'll know what to expect if you ever find yourself here during the holiday season, or if you just wanted to know. What's up guys, Patrick here, tour guide and your guide to Barcelona and more. And if you haven't done so already, I invite you to subscribe to my channel where you can find more videos about Barcelona and Spain as a whole that'll help you get better prepared for your next trip or keep you connected after you leave. So what's Christmas like here? Well, if you've ever been to Spain, as you know, with anything Spanish, traditions can change from region to region. So you might see some differences throughout the entire country, but the general idea is relatively the same. Living in Barcelona, I'll also tell you some special Catalan traditions you can find here during the Christmas season. Two big differences that I've noticed with the way Spain celebrates Christmas compared to the States is that it's a longer holiday season as a whole, and that the 6th is actually a bigger day for presents than the 25th, which if you stop to think about it, actually makes a little bit more sense. But just like in the States, December 1st really is that start of the holiday season where you start to see decorations going up all over the place. Although the lights have already been put up and many places have already been turned on before December even starts. Yes, Black Friday has gotten a lot bigger within the last couple of years, but traditionally here in Spain, the big holiday shopping all starts on the December Puente weekend. Puente is Spanish for bridge, and a lot of times what we have here in Spain are called bridge holidays. In the States, growing up, we always had holidays on Mondays, so you don't miss out on too many of those work days or days for school or anything like that. But what you have here are bridge holidays that if it falls on a Tuesday, it falls on a Tuesday, and you just bridge over from Sunday to Tuesday, meaning that Monday is a day off as well. The same thing would happen on a Thursday. Thursday, you skip over Friday, and you get to the weekend. It's a four-day weekend. Now here in Spain, this happens throughout the year, but the December Puente holiday is a lot of fun because we have both the 6th and the 8th as holidays. The 6th is celebrated as Spanish Constitution Day, and the 8th is celebrated as the Immaculate Conception celebration. Now, like I said before, it's traditionally the start of the Christmas shopping season, but it's also a great excuse to travel, get away, take advantage of those couple extra days off. This year, we didn't get too much of a change because the 6th fell on a Sunday, but what happens when those days fall on Tuesday and Thursday of the week? What do you do with Wednesday? After the big Puente weekend, the next big Christmas tradition here in Spain is on December 22nd, and it's El Gordo, the fat one. A huge Christmas lottery that everybody gets involved with. It's been going on for some like 200 years at this point, and this year the total prize possible winnings are 2.5 billion euros. This is a huge tradition that people spend hundreds, if not thousands on every year trying to get a ticket. Each year you'll find long lines of people trying to get the right ticket and there's a massive advertising campaign on TV with some actually really good commercials leading up to the 22nd. I personally will buy maybe one ticket each year, but keep in mind that each of those tickets runs for 20 euros a pop. Christmas Eve here is known as La Noche Buena, the good night, and it's a time for families to get together. There's also a special mass called the Misa de Gallo, which literally translates to the Mass of the Rooster, and it's held every 24th at midnight. Here in Catalonia on Christmas Eve, there's a special tradition, usually for families with younger children, that's called Cagatillo. And it's a log with a face, a hat, and also a blanket on its back. Now this is a log that you bring in and the children will feed the log throughout the month. Now after feeding the log throughout the month, the kids will come in on the 24th with a stick and they'll sing a song that basically says, cagatillo, cagatillo, poop me a present. If you don't poop me these good presents, I'll hit you with a stick. And when they hit the log with the stick, out of the log's butt, when you lift up the blanket, they'll have pooped out some presents for those kids. Usually the 24th are just those smaller presents. When I was growing up, we always did our big presents on Christmas Day. We would wake up and under the tree, we had our presents right there. Here in Spain, traditionally, it's always been reserved for January 6th. Like I said before, kind of makes a little bit more sense when the wise men actually gave the presents to Christ. That's when you get your presents. But here, some of that has been changing over the years. What happens more and more is now presents are being given on the 25th, especially if you have younger children, and that really gives them more of a chance to play with those toys before they have to go back to school. One of the big differences here in Spain is that school doesn't start again until after the 6th. So kids do have a longer time off, but if you give the presents out on the 25th, it gives them a little bit more time to play with all of that. One of the things that I've always thought was really funny was that when someone explained to me that they stopped giving gifts on the 6th and started giving them out on the 25th just in case they needed to return any of those items. 
It's one of the big differences that I've always seen in Spain in terms of which day you give out those gifts and some families even decide to split it up and divide those gifts into both days. Now the other thing that I've noticed that's different is that it's traditional to have a Christmas lunch. I've always seen Christmas dinner but here it's more traditional to have some sort of Christmas lunch with your family. Growing up in the States, I never celebrated Boxing Day. Realistically, we just had a day of rest, nothing special at all. Here in Catalonia, it's called San Esteve, and what you really do is you just have a bunch of leftovers. And one of the biggest traditions is making canalones, which is kind of like a little lasagna that is really, really good. Moving on to the 28th, we have another special day, and this one is called El Dia de los Santos Inocentes, and it's basically a Spanish April Fool's. If you're looking at any Spanish media or anything that day, be careful with what you read because it is just all about jokes. All sorts of things will come out, especially on those Instagram feeds, whatever. We wrap up the year, obviously, with New Year's Eve and New Year's Day, and just like anywhere else, it is a huge celebration. You can check out my other video on what we actually do over here. There are a few different quirky little celebrations that they have in Spain, but you have to check out my other video for that. Moving on to the next day, we get down to January 5th, which is the day before the Three Kings Day. January 5th is a big day because it marks the Cabalgata, which is a big parade that goes on basically in every single town where the three kings arrive. It's a lot of fun, huge parade where candy is just thrown out everywhere and you have a lot of different floats that move on through, ending with the three kings arriving, giving out presents and throwing out that candy. It's a really big event and obviously one that the kids get really excited for. So everybody in all the different towns in the bigger cities always comes out and checks it out. I myself have been involved in some of them. Getting inside of that float and throwing out the candy is actually a lot of fun and you can just see it in everybody's eyes, kind of the excitement and the, just the celebration in it all. And especially with the kids knowing that the next day they're gonna be getting presents. And the last day is January 6th and you can see that from the beginning of December all the way to January 6th, this is a much longer celebration. There's a lot more specific days that are actually celebrated but that's to be expected in Catholic countries like Spain. January 6th is the day of the kings known as Reyes. Now obviously, like I said before, this is the big day for presents and depending on the families, if you've already given out some presents on the 24th or 25th, you still always have something for the 6th. A lot of times these are the bigger presents or the more important ones where maybe you've gotten something a little bit smaller on the 24th or the 25th, but Reyes is the day that the wise men have come, they're bringing their gifts to Christ and everybody here gets them as well. There's also a special tradition within the families to eat a roscón de reyes, which is a round cake with dried fruits and pine nuts on the top, and it's divided amongst each of the family members, and when you eat it, if you find a bean on the inside, you're the loser, you pay for the cake, but if you find the king on the inside, and there's a little figure of a king on the inside, you get to win and basically have luck for the year. I've won twice already and I'm hoping that this year I can finish out my group of the three kings. After the six, it's back to school, it's back to work, you've got the close of that holiday season. You can see compared to back at home, it is a lot longer with a few different extra days, different traditions and everything. Remember that some of these traditions are specific to Barcelona, so I'm interested in seeing if some of you from other parts of Spain have some different traditions to share as well. Other countries too, obviously. Thank you for watching, have a Merry Christmas, Feliz Navidad, and here in Catalonia, Bon Nadal.